Hi everyone, it's Ingrid from Conducting Artistry. Today's video is all about how to follow the conductor's score. So we often have just our own part when we're sitting in our ensemble, but we can learn so much more by looking at what the conductor sees, which is everyone's parts all together. Hope you enjoy it. So when we're in our ensemble, orchestra or band, we only really get to see one line of music. But what we really want to be able to do while we're sitting in our spot in the ensemble with our one piece of music is to be able to imagine and be able to hear all the different things that are going on in the ensemble. So it's kind of like we have one puzzle piece, one single line in the music, and we want to be able to imagine what's on the box of the puzzle. So we're going to listen to this piece Bloom by Stephen Bright. And you could listen to this piece or you could listen to another piece that you are playing in your ensemble. There's a lot of videos online where you can see the score while you're listening. If you're doing it on the computer, make sure that you've got it on full screen mode. Or you can print one out, like I've got a printed one here. So we're going to get the score and then we're going to listen to the recording. So I'm going to put the recording on. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pick one instrument and we're going to follow that one instrument through a part of the piece. So let's pick an instrument that we can see is playing at the beginning here. Let's pick the clarinet uh, in B flat. So if you've never seen a score before, this is an orchestra score and we've got all the woodwind instruments are up the top here. Piccolo, flute one, flute two, oboe, bassoon one and two, clarinet one, clarinet two. Then the next group of instruments, and you can see there's a little break there, is the brass. So we've got the horns, the trumpets, trombones and tuba. You can see there's another little break and we've got the harp and the harp has got its own little section by itself. Then the next thing we've got is all of our percussion, timpani, crotales, glockenspiel, vibraphone, SC, which means suspended cymbal, tam-tam, which is like a gong, and bass drum. And then right at the bottom, we've got violin one, violin two, viola, cello, and bass. So our orchestra score is always going to have woodwinds, brass, harp, percussion, and strings. Now, if you have a band score, it might be a little bit different. Obviously, you're not going to have the strings. And sometimes the percussion is in a different place. Sometimes it's in the middle between the woodwinds and the brass. And if you have a harp, that could be in different places as well. So first step is look at what all the instruments are. And we're going to pick the clarinet part to follow along with the recording. So we follow the clarinet part all the way up to bar 22 and then you can see that the clarinet has got rests. So if we kept going, we'd want to be listening out for 
what some of these other instruments are doing so that we can kind of keep track of the tempo. Now you heard that at the beginning of this piece it was very slow and so I was just spending a lot of time waiting for the clarinet to get to that next note so that I knew where I was. And once I'd heard a couple of notes, I had a pretty good idea of what the speed of the music was. And if it's a piece that you're playing, then you probably already have a good idea of the speed. But every time we listen to a recording, it could be different. So you've got to just really follow along and try and get an idea of what the speed is. So you could pick one instrument and follow it all the way through. Now, probably the first thing to do would be to pick your instrument. The second thing you could do would be to pick a different instrument to what you play. So maybe if you play the clarinet, you could do that first, but then you might want to decide, oh, I'm going to see what the violin does and I'm going to follow the first violin part all the way through the piece. The third thing that you could do is just see if you can follow along the whole thing using one of those parts you already looked at as a kind of anchor point. So if you get a bit lost, which it's easy to do if you've never seen a score before, then go back to the part that you were watching and see if you can lock back in into where it is. If I kept the recording going, I can see this bit here. Back to my clone. Now this bit I might get lost, not know where I am. Well, there's French horns here. So now I'm back, I know where I am. Just keep the time. So you can keep doing that following the whole piece along and the idea is just see if you can get into the tempo and then just keep counting your beats in the bars. Now this piece is quite helpful because we actually have this glockenspiel part here which is giving us crotchets all the way through so it's pretty easy to hear the tempo of the music and hear where the beats are which helps me follow along and know where I'm up to. If you're following along with a video on the computer, what you'll notice is that the video will automatically turn the page. So if you're lost and the turning the page happens, then you just want to look and see right at the next page. As soon as that page turn happens, that's probably going to get you back into the right spot. Or you might see like on this page that we just turned, that suddenly a whole lot of people, all of the woodwinds, that's why I wrote woodwinds, come in together. So if I was lost, I'm going to listen out for where is the spot where all the woodwinds come together at that point there, and I'm going to listen for that in the recording. the French horn.
Oh, yep, heard them. Listening for trombines. So you can see that you can follow along with a score and this is an activity that you can do anytime whether it be on your band piece or your orchestra piece or maybe on a piece that you've never heard before. So if you have a look at the link below in the video you'll see some places that you could go to look for pieces of music where you can download the score and often there's the recording as well. So check out the links at the bottom of the video. If you found today's video helpful, make sure that you subscribe below to get videos every day. If you're a student, you can share this with other musicians and your friends so that they can practice really well at home. And if you are a conductor, make sure that you check out www.conductingartistry.com where you can read blogs and enroll in free online courses to work on your conducting while we're all stuck at home.